Welcome to my channel again. In this video, I will be discussing on a multipurpose tree called Gamhar, Melina arborea, which is also known as white tick, Kashmir tree, etc. In India, it is locally called Gomari, Gamari, Shivan, Shivane, etc. It is a fast growing deciduous tree that attains a height of about 18 meter with clear bowl of 6 to 9 meter and girth of 1.5 to 2.5 meter. Under favorable conditions, it can attain a height of 30 meter or even more and a girth of 4.5 meter. But in drier environment and on poor soil, its growth is shrubby or stunted. It is indigenous species of India and also found in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Burma, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, etc. In India, it is scattered in mixed forest of moist region extending into comparatively dry region in central India. It occurs sometimes in semi evergreen forest and also in sal forest. Presently, IUCN considers it as least concern. Due to its fast growing nature, it is emerging as an economically important species world over in tropical regions mainly for timber and pulpwood. Its flowering takes place from February to April and the fruits ripen during April to June. Now regarding uses. It has got diverse array of uses. In India, it is one of the best and reliable timbers. Its wood is quite shiny and lighter than thick but strong, moderately hard and durable. The wood does not crack or warp in seasoning and after seasoning becomes very steady. Its wood is also easy to work and can be turned to a fair surface that can be painted and polished nicely. Its wood is also suitable for class 1 commercial plywood. It is one of the best hardwood species for pulpwood and paper making. Its timber is used for construction works, paneling, furniture, cabinet work, turning articles, toys, artificial limbs, musical instruments, etc. Its leaves and fruits are eaten by cattle and deers. The fruits are also edible. It is planted as ornamental tree, set tree, avenue tree, windbreak, firebreak and also in coffee and cocoa plantation to protect young crops and to suppress weeds. This tree has also high potential for carbon sequestration and to lower carbon emission in long term basis. So it is important in the context of climate change. It is important tree in agroforestry and also for reforestation of degraded forest land. Now regarding its medicinal uses, almost all parts of this plant is used in Indian system of medicine both internally and externally. For instance, the leaf is used to treat headache, gastric ulcer, burning sensation of body, etc. The fruits are used in diarrhea, fever, cardiac disorder, skin rash, gonorrhea, as laxative and for milk secretion in women. Its root is a component of dosamula and brihat panchamula of Ayurveda. Palvara's root is applied to gout and root decoction is used in indigestion. Root is also used as nerve tonic in insanity and epilepsy. Root bark is used for washing and healing of septic wounds. The roots and barks are also used in snake bite and scorpion stings. As far as its demand and market, most of its timbers is locally used and supplied to the local markets as it is comparatively cheaper. Presently, Karnataka Forest Department seniorage rate for its timber log is rupees 19,000 per cubic meter. Now let me talk about its propagation and cultivation. It is usually propagated through seeds but can be also propagated by vegetative methods from stem cuttings. For raising nursery seedlings, yellow colored fruits are collected in May June from selected elite mother trees and after depulping the seeds are sun dried. The fresh seeds are sown in raised beds. After germination, small seedlings are pricked and transplanted in polybags of 5 inch by 8 inch or 6 inch by 9 inch or 8 inch by 12 inch sizes containing proper mixture of ingredients. The seeds are also 
directly sown in poly bags. Stamps also can be prepared from old seedlings, usually one year old, from nursery bed and thereafter transplanted in poly bags of required sizes for further growth. Clonal plants can be produced from apical cuttings. About 12 cm long apical cutting with 2 to 3 nodes are taken from 2 to 3 weeks old sprouts produced on coppiced elite tree. The cuttings are treated with fungicide carbon regime solution 1 gram per liter for 15 minutes. Thereafter, the bottom ends of the cuttings are dipped in 3000 ppm IBA solution and then planted in root trainers filled with vermiculite. The treated cuttings are kept inside moist chamber. Rooting takes place within 15 to 25 days. The rooted cuttings are polypotted for obtaining required growth and height for planting. For block planting, pitch of size 45 cm by 45 cm by 45 cm are dug. For avenue planting, bigger pitch size of 75 cm by 75 cm by 75 cm can be dug to plant tall seedlings. For pulp wood and bioenergy plantation, 2 meter by 2 meter spacement and for sound timber plantation, 3 meter by 3 meter to 5 meter by 5 meter spacing and for agroforestry, 4.5 meter by 4.5 meter spacing can be adopted. Planted seedlings should be protected from browsing. Periodic watering and weedings are essential up to two years still establishment. Initial narrow spacing along with early and regular thinnings are done to improve stem form. Pruning of seedlings in nursery stage and after field planting is helpful to reduce heavy branching and forking. Usually rotation period of 5 to 7 years for pulp wood and 8 to 15 years for logwood production are practiced. However, 15 to 20 years rotation period may be better to obtain high quality timber. In case of 10 years rotation, the stands are thinned to 50% after 5 years and again 50% after 7 years. The thinned materials can be used for pulp wood. Harvesting should be done during dry months to fetch more price. Now about its yield. As per report, average wood biomass yield after 10 years is about 250 to 300 tons per hectare. At 12 years age, yield is reported to be 84 cubic meter per hectare in sandy soil, 210 cubic meter per hectare in clay or lateritic soil, while in favorable alluvial soil, its yield may be 252 cubic meter per hectare at 10 years age. Gum hard based agroforestry has high potential to enhance farm income. As intercrops, orhor, cowpea, moong, okra, groundnut, maize, watermelon, pineapple, banana, etc. can be grown. In multi tire cropping system, black pepper can be grown on gum hard tree along with coconut and banana. As windbreak along the border, the farmer can grow gum hard tree to protect banana crop. Gum hard tree should not be planted with teak as it serves as an alternate host for the pest of teak. Now let me conclude. In spite of having multiple utility and suitability for quick remunerative return, this tree has not gained much popularity in agroforestry systems in India. So the farmers should be persuaded to grow this economically important tree. However, the growers need adequate supply of quality planting materials in the form of seedlings, improved clone, which can ensure good tree form and high productivity. The farmers should also be given training on its good management practices. The research institutes under ICFRA, agriculture universities, along with the state forest departments should make collaborative efforts to develop improved cultivar or clone of this tree with desired traits like good tree form, high productivity and resistance to pests and diseases. The government should also have mechanism for efficient pricing system and marketing facilities of its products. Thank you. Please 
subscribe my channel if you like my video